Hey everybody, what's going on? I am Greg Sussman, joined as always here on this Tuesday by JJ Zacharyson of FanDuel, who's here to tell us who to buy and sell as we head into week eight. What's happening, JJ? Not too much, man. I'm ready for week eight because week seven was kind of a disaster. Super low scoring week all around and let's be better in week eight than we were in week seven. And I know you're serious when no player that you're mentioning today has a bye this week. So this is a really serious version of J.J. Zacharyson. So let's begin uh, first with Leonard Fournette. You're buying him this week, facing off against the Jets, and he's stayed healthy. He's been pretty awesome. Yeah, he has been pretty awesome. I think a lot of people don't realize how awesome he's been uh, because he hasn't found the end zone much. He's only found the end zone once, but based on his yardage total, which, by the way, He's only one of he's one of three players uh, with 900 plus scrimmage yards this year, uh, along with Dalvin Cook and Christian McCaffrey. But based on his yardage total, he should have closer to five more touchdowns than he currently has. Even if you give him 60 percent of that, even if you give him three more touchdowns, all of a sudden he's averaging 20 plus PPR points per game and he's an easy top five guy. So I think where the market views Leonard Fournette is not quite where he should be. Uh, so I think he's a buy candidate as a result of that. The one problem with that, JJ, is that the only person that may know how good Leonard Fournette is are his owners right now. All of us are being like, oh, it's Leonard Fournette, eh. But his owners are like, man, this guy is awesome. If you can trade for him, do it. But I think it may be a little bit tougher than you think. Another player you're buying, and this was predictable, is Kenny Galladay, who got usurped by Marvin Jones' four touchdowns this past week. He was coming off a two-touchdown game of his own and did, well, nothing against Minnesota. But he's facing off against the Giants in their brutal secondary here on Sunday, putting Kenny Galladay in a prime bounce-back spot. And, not to mention, his bye is already in the rearview mirror. Yeah, exactly. He gets the Giants this week. He gets Oakland the week after that. Uh, Galladay was one of just a few wide receivers who had seen a 20-plus percent target share in every single game played heading into Week 7. Uh, and then that game happened where he only saw a 4% target share, but that sometimes happens. So you can either look at this past week and say, this is what's to come for Kenny Galladay, or you can look at the larger sample size and realize that Kenny Galladay is a very good wide receiver who's going to warrant a lot of targets in that offense, so he should bounce back pretty easily. No worries here about Kenny Galladay. I expect him to be fine going forward. A lot to like about Baby Tron for the Detroit Lions. One more player, JJ, that you're buying, and that brings us to Cincinnati's Tyler Boyd. You know, the ghost of A.J. Green, it's, it's coming, maybe, uh, at some point. But this Bengals offense, it still doesn't have him in it. It's about Tyler Boyd. It's about Alex Erickson, as we saw this past Sunday. And obviously, it's about Auden Tate. But Tyler Boyd still seems to be the lead dog in Cincinnati. How come you're buying him right now? Yeah, look, I buy volume in fantasy football. There are enough people out there who hate the Cincinnati offense, and they're going to hate Tyler Boyd as a result of that. But Boyd is still top 10 in, at wide receiver and target share. He's had a, a couple of bad uh, outings over the last two weeks. So as a result of that, you're buying low. Uh, but like I said, I buy volume. Volume correlates strongest to fantasy success and fantasy production, and that's what Tyler Boyd is seeing. Obviously, a target going to Tyler Boyd from Andy Dalton isn't the same as someone like Tyler Lockett seeing a target from Russell Wilson, uh, but at the same time, Boyd is seeing so much volume that it's just hard to ignore. For those that thought last year's breakout was, well, kind of fluky, Boyd's proven this year it's, it's not. He's reliable, and it may not be Russell Wilson or Tyler Lockett, as you said, We'll take it, man. We'll take that target share, and we'll take how involved he is in the offense. Right now, the offense revolves around Tyler Boyd, and that's something certainly worth noting. All right, we gave you the players that you're buying. Now let's move on to the players that you're selling. And once again, we get to Aaron Jones, who didn't have four touchdowns this past week. He did have one, but that split with Jamal Williams continues to be relatively even. That means there are certain weeks where A.J. is going to do absolutely nothing. You're going to use this opportunity to sell him. Yeah, I mean, you can look at his fantasy production and say, oh, Aaron Jones is absolutely fine. He's found the end zone nine times this season. Uh, but based on his yardage total and based on just natural regression, he should have a lot uh, fewer than that. Uh, with Jamal Williams out of the lineup for two games this year, basically two games because Jamal Williams was concussed against Philadelphia, Aaron Jones saw six of his nine goal line rushes. He had 82% of the running back carries for Green Bay. But with Jamal Williams, that running back rush share drops to about 60%. Uh, and obviously, he's not seeing as many goal line rushes as well. So I think this is a prime opportunity to just sell Aaron Jones. I think he should be fine for the rest of the season, but I don't think he's going to be top five fine. Aaron Jones will be fine going forward, but 
right now, his value may never be higher. I mean, it was for the four touchdown game, but right now, we've gone past that. So it may not be higher again than where it is right now. Aaron Jones is fine. There's nothing wrong with him. But if you can get something bigger for an Aaron Jones, it's probably worth selling off. Another player, JJ, that you're selling is Corey Davis of the Titans. And you want to talk about predictability, this is it. Corey Davis does this every year where he has a big game and we're like, oh my God, Corey Davis has finally emerged. And then he has a three for 30. The one difference now is Ryan Tannehill is the quarterback and not Marcus Mariota. But we have done this in the past with Blaine Gabbert too. Are you not buying that Corey Davis will be consistent going forward? You know, there could be something with this rapport between Corey Davis and Ryan Tannehill, but I'm still looking at this offense and realizing and seeing that it's a run heavy offense. Corey Davis had a 25% target share on Sunday, and he still only saw seven targets. There's enough competition in that offense with AJ Brown, with Adam Humphreys, with the tight ends that they have who are both pass catchers. I, I think there's enough reason to sell Corey Davis, despite the fact that this Tannehill thing could be real despite the fact that they're facing Tampa Bay this week. I think you use those two things and you use that to sell Corey Davis now rather than waiting because I do think that overall we're going to see unpredictable production from him. Absolutely. you got to be cautious in selling Corey Davis because that production level could be huge, the former first-round pick. But we have so much of a sample size of that inconsistency. I'd rather take my chances now. Selling him off, selling that dream to somebody else. One last player to sell, and that is is the Rams' Todd Gurley, who saw, I believe, just 60% uh, of the snaps this past Sunday. No Malcolm Brown either. Daryl Henderson was the one that took, picked up the extra snaps. Gurley does not seem like himself, and those that were not on him coming into the year, they seem to kind of be right. Yeah, look, Todd Gurley looks like he's a touchdown-dependent fantasy asset right now. He, like you said, he only saw about 60% of the Rams' uh, offensive snaps this past week. Some of you might be saying, well, it's because the Rams were ahead, but that's precisely the problem. If the Rams are ahead, then what happens to Todd Gurley? We care about production in fantasy football. Now, I do understand that they're facing Cincinnati this week, which is arguably the best matchup that you can possibly find on paper, but you're also running the risk of what happens if Todd Gurley doesn't perform in that game, that all of a sudden you're selling him a lot lower than you are right now. Based on his yardage totals, he should have about two and a half touchdowns. Uh, maybe that gets a little bit of a little bit of a boost given the offense and the situation that he's in. But he shouldn't have six touchdowns right now. He's been pretty fortunate there, especially given the splits in pass to rush uh, pass to rush touchdown ratio for the Rams. So I think all of that together. Don't wait for the matchup. You can wait if you want to. You know he could go off this week. I wouldn't. I would just sell him right now because he has become a pretty touchdown dependent fantasy asset. I would also sell him off right now because after this week's great matchup, you have that buy, and then you're like, it's going to be tough to trade a guy during a buy, especially not someone like it's Alvin Kamara during a buy. It's Todd Gurley who you're trying to sell off anyway. It's going to be tougher after this week. Use this matchup as an opportunity to be like, hey, Gurley's going to go off. You should get him in now. That's probably your best chance to trade away Todd Gurley. That's going to do it for us here on the FanDuel. Hurry up, JJ. Appreciate the time, and good luck this weekend. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. All right, tomorrow, Jim Sonis will join me as we preview week eight from a daily fantasy perspective. Have a great night. Enjoy the tip-off of NBA season, and we'll see you back here tomorrow.